Hello again, stat students, back for our final unit of the year here with random variables. Um, so random variables, I'll just turn right into it here. Um, the idea of a numerical outcome of a random phenomenon or can be discrete or continuous, what we're talking about is, is really anything from seeing a table that might look like this um, to having a spinner that starts at 0 0.25, 0.5, and we just spin and see what we get. So um, that's what we mean here. It can be discrete. It could be number of successes out of four free throws, um, or it could be continuous where clearly this one down here is continuous, that there's really an infinite number of values along this, this uh, spinner. So discrete random variable, this is the one that you'll see much more often in this unit. And this is the, the table right here that I was just drawing up on that last slide where you have a value of x. Um, and that value of x doesn't have to be a whole number or an integer. It could be um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. It, it really depends on the context of the, of the problem that you're working with. Um, more often than not, it's going to be an, an integer value. Um, and, th and then there will be probabilities on the bottom part. And the probability just represents what's the likelihood of each one of those outcomes occurring. So again, if we went back to the idea of you shooting four free throws, um, we would have, in this case, a certain probability that you made zero of them. Maybe there's a 5% chance that you don't make any of your free throws, and there's a 10% chance that you make one, and there's a 20% chance that you make uh, two, and there's a 50% chance that you make three, and that would leave, what, a 15% chance that you make all four. So again, all of these add up to one. Um, and really there's these two probability rules that come into play with these tables, and that's that the probabilities themselves per last unit need to be zero to one inclusive, and that they all need to add up to one. Um, so there's always a definite. This will not go on um, forever in this direction where we can't nail down the rest of these probabilities. Um, so that's the that's a discrete random variable, and this is what's called a probability distribution. Okay, just the likelihood of each one occurring. Okay, so the idea of grading on a curve, um, which we talked about earlier this year, is really the notion if we look at it as a GPA equivalent. Um, this is the GPA equivalent for grades here. Okay, and a zero again is an F, one's a D, two's a C, three's a B, four is an A. Um, grading on a curve really does mean that something like this, 40% of students would get a C, um, something like 20% of students would get an A, and 20% would get a D, and then 10, excuse me, a B, 20% would get a B, and 20% would get a D, and then 10% would get an A, and 10% would get an F. Okay, so this is a probability distribution of grading on a curve. And then that leads to something that we don't use quite as often, but is something that we can um, create along with these probability distributions, which is a probability histogram. And a probability histogram, we just take our values and put them down on the axis. Um, because it's a histogram and not a bar chart, that means there's no space in between them here, um, between the bars themselves. But uh, then we set 10, 20, 30, 40. And from here, we create our histogram. So there's a 10% chance of getting an F. There's a 20% chance of getting a D. There's a 40% chance of getting a C. And then back down, and you can see here, that's normal because the idea of grading on a curve is right on that curve right there. So that's a probability histogram. Again, the, like, the event is down here which in this case is a GPA equivalent, and this is a probability over here. And that's always gonna be probability. The event, of course, is what will change from problem to problem down here. That will, that will change from question to question. Okay, so the alternative, as I put on the first slide, is the spinner. And the spinner is the notion that, uh, that we go on and we have, you know, for instance, where the arrow is pointed at right now, could be the value uh, 0 0.112426010, uh, 0, 1, 3, 9, 5, and so on, um, because there's an infinite number of values. So 
So if I asked you what's the probability that we would get a 0.25 here, um, the answer to that is actually zero. And this is, again, for you calc folks, the limit is n goes to infinity of 1 over n is zero. And that's representing the probability of getting any individual value here because we don't know if this is where it's at right now. Is that 0.112426013.95 or is it 0.112426013.96? And so that's the idea of there being an infinite number of values. So that's that's the continuous idea. Again, we won't work with that much here. The, the continuous one we've worked with a lot this year is actually this. Okay, when we get a Z or a T, um, on a normal curve that is continuous and we will circle back around to that in this unit um, at the end is coming back to continuous on the normal curve where we used a normal CDF or a TCDF to just find an area under a curve um, rather than an actual discrete probability like on that table. Um, the couple last things on the continuous um, Again, we talked about this back when, but it doesn't matter if you use less than or less than or equal to because the idea of it being continuous is that there's an infinite number of, of basically uh, lines in the data, um, vertical lines in the normal curve or spots on the spinner that it could hit. And so it doesn't matter. Um, there, there is no difference between those two, between less than or less than or equal to or greater than or greater than or equal to. And again, we use it most often when we're talking about the Z and the T. Um, so last question here, uh, if the mean amount of money someone wins playing 10,000 trials of a 25 cent gambling game is negative 153.67 with a standard deviation of 167.91, what is the probability they win in the long run? So here what we have done is we've played a whole bunch of discrete games, okay? So we have played, we played one game, then we played it a second, then we put another quarter in or and another, and bet another quarter and bet another quarter and on and on and on. So that's actually a discrete number of games but this is a situation where the discrete then gets represented as continuous okay so if we look at this as um uh the that this is the actual theoretical mean and standard deviation for this game then that would be sigma which means we'd be dealing with a z here okay um so what is the probability that they win in the long run well that would be what's the probability that we get a value that's greater than zero okay so that would be our x minus, in this case, negative 153.67 over 167.91. Okay, and we'd get that calculation um, in terms of where that is on the curve, which here would be, uh, let's see, a z-score of about 0.92. And again, we want greater than, so we're looking at what's the probability that Z is greater than 0.92. And that would again be a normal CDF, oops, CDF, um, in this case, 0.92 to 99, okay? Because our curve here would look like this. We'd be right here at 0.92, and we want greater than that. So you go to our second VARS, normal CDF, okay, so second vars your lower bound is 0.92 your upper bound is 99 and we get a probability of about 17.9 percent or 0.1788 um, so there's a 17.9 percent chance that if we played this game 10,000 times which some people do in a 25 cent uh, slot machine can play it 10,000 times in a in a uh, one one sitting uh, sadly um, that there's about a, an 18% chance that that person's going to win money at the end because this is how the slot machines are wired is to, to have you lose money in the long run, of course, but a big standard deviation in gambling is, is all about uh, getting people to come back. You have a big standard deviation, they win a lot of money and they get excited, so they come back and lose more money to you later on. Um, uh, again, this is a, a gambling PSA, um, but just be smart. Uh, bring your uh, $5 in cash and no ATM card. Um, we'll leave it at that for now. And uh, so you're seeing here a little bit of, of discrete playing 10,000 times. You're seeing a little bit of continuous with the, with the Z-score. Um, again, we'll now go down a path of discrete for a while and end with some continuous at the end of this unit. Uh, that's it for now. We'll see you for uh, random variable lesson number two.